We're doing uh, four pass deposits now, another unique feature. Um, and the reason why it's unique is that most of the other systems cannot handle the fact that one product consists of um, the main product or the, the container as well as the, uh, uh, the liquid that is inside. So just a little bit of background maybe. 4Pos originally was designed for liquor stores and that's why it's inherently part of 4Pos and that's why thousands and thousands of liquor stores use 4Pos. You might say, but I do not have a liquor store, but most businesses do have deposits in some way. Uh, gas returns would have a deposit. Uh, your, uh, some of the dairies would still have glass bottles that they would requ require on. Supermarkets handles deposits as uh, on bottled um, uh, cold drinks or soft drinks. Um, you could have a multitude of businesses that would have deposits. So it's not just liquor stores. It actually applies to most businesses. Um, it's a nice way of getting your customer also to come back to you as well. All right. So let's look at one product that is quite uh, renowned for having, or one of the products that's quite renowned having a deposit system or deposits part of it. It's Black Label Quartz. It's a beer for the customers that uh, are from other countries that do not know Black Label Beer. So let's look at the product itself. In the deposit part of it, um, if I click on the little block with three dots in the middle, next to the deposit you'll see that it's already linked to sort of SAB Court Brown. So let's go and look at that SAB Court Brown. And you'll see that it's got a description in there. We've got a receipt name. In other words, what will it print on the receipt for the customer? We have a quick key, in other words, in the point of sale, how would I ring up this item? Obviously, you can't scan the barcode, so you'll just ring up a quick key, and um, that will be your deposit name. Again, you can call it anything. You can call it SAB2, you can call it just B2, you can call it E for MT number 2, or 1, or 3, or 20, it doesn't matter. The VAT is standard, in other words, yes, there is VAT applicable to it. There's 12 bottles in a case. And then the important part down here is with the system for pause automatically creates or caters for uh, a pricing structure of saying what is your inclusive price that you pay um, when you buy the product in other words when i buy it from my supplier what would i pay for this these are inclusive prices um, in four pos uh, the same as your selling price in the on the product it'll be inclusive of 80 cents and your case price uh, for uh, sorry the case price would be nine rand okay and then on the special price what would you give the customer for that uh, bottle when it comes back and again on what will you give him for a case now let's just type an amount in there of five rand um, which basically means that when you're buying it back from a customer or you're buying it back from somebody that brings you empties now the reason why you would want to possibly charge a different price for that because bear in mind that you've got to keep this bottle uh, safe uh, if it gets broken you lose the money uh, if it's dirty they won't accept it etc etc there's a lot of reasons and of course you're using up floor space you're using up storage space for your deposit so you would want some return on that okay so that's the idea behind using that option so this is what the deposits look uh, like if I go and look at my pricing, as you'll see in the pricing matrix, the deposit comes into play all along here. In other words, it's part of the pricing. So the deposit price is built into uh, the price that you, uh, the cost of the item. All right. Now, let's go and have a look and see what that looks like in the point of sale when I want to ring it up itself. Okay. Uh, just a quick story while we jump to the point of sale. Uh, some years ago, I actually phoned a customer of ours in Randburg that had a very big uh, liquor store somewhere far away, and he was running it remotely, and we were assisting him to make sure that they managed the system properly. Um, it became obvious one day that the customer's calculations or the, the manager's calculations in the store was incorrect. They never took the deposit into play, so they were selling a case of beer. <coughs> uh, excuse me. They were selling a case of beer. Um, for the amount of money excluding the case and the glass so effectively the more beer they were selling the more money they were losing uh, i phoned the customer and i said listen i suggest that you phone them quickly and tell them to lock the doors very upset with me all the rest of it half an hour later got a call back and said yes you're right thank you for that okay 
So be careful of this. Uh, do not lose money and close your doors and you don't have a clue. So do, do the calculation. Okay. So let's have a look quickly and the point of sale. We saw earlier that uh, the quick key itself was B2. So I'm going to ring up. Um, it was a black label court. So as you know by now, you can in point of sale, you can literally just type in the description. I can go and ring up my black label court. I'm selling a case of black label to this customer. This is the selling price with the containers, the glass bottles, plus the plastic crate uh, that it comes into. If I want to, if he's now returning a crate and bottles to me, I'd be able to go and type in my deposit amount, uh, sorry, but deposit code or my quick key as you saw earlier as B2. And as soon as I ring it up, it will come up and say, okay, fine, what is the customer returning? Is he returning an empty bottle, an empty crate, or the crate and the bottles? Now, if I do that up, it calculates, in other words, the empties itself, the 12 bottles, as well as the physical plastic crate, and it gives the customer credit um, for that item. You can actually set it up in four pos to do this automatically in one transaction um, as well. We'll handle that in a different video. But that's, that's basically how your deposit is. Now, the important part of this is that your deposits would have increased with this quantity today. So let me finalize this sale quickly. Um, and then we can see how that brings it plays into it. All right, so I'm just going to go through my serial numbers and so on. And then uh, again, uh, for my deposits, once I've sold that item, it will be updated, obviously. And if I go back to, sorry, my back office program over here, I can go and look at my stock takes. And if I look at my deposits itself, you'll see it is a whole section for deposit stock take sheets. And I can do a stock take uh, adjustments for the deposits as well. And it will then show me that my all my different deposits, what I have in stock, and all the rest of it. So my SAB Court Brown, how many units do I have in stock at the moment? Okay. Um, and you can physically go and say, well, fine, I've got two crates and I've got 24 bottles or whatever the case may be. As you can see, it keeps it separate here, although it's called one deposit as such. Okay. Um, that, in a nutshell, is deposits. Uh, very important that you set it up correctly. A nice tool to have as part of your uh, business uh, armor to, to use in your business. Enjoy.